when you guys first boot up NX, it's not going to look like this. It's going to look like this. You're going to have a discovery center show up, which is kind of like their ad service, I guess. It gives you like neat ideas or whatever. And then over here is going to show recently done projects. And you want to start a new project. So first things first, you can go up to File, New, and just follow along. If you don't have it open, that's fine. It's probably easier to just watch what I'm doing than try to replicate it on your computer. File, New, and it's going to have a little dialog box that pops up. It's going to look like this. There's a lot going on here. It's asking you all kinds of stuff. If you want to make a ship structure, if you want to make simulations or an inspection on something. A lot of this you don't ever need to look at. What you should be on is model because you're modeling, you're making some kind of component, some kind of part. You want it set to modeling um, because you're making a single thing, you're not making an assembly or sheet metal. And you want the units to be in millimeters. We're going metric this year and when we start adding all your guys' CAD together because we have um, a software that lets you like kind of sync it with everyone else's. If you have a part that's in inches, imperial measurement, or if you have in millimeters, uh, it won't mesh together. It doesn't like it. You have to have it in one or the other. So we're choosing millimeters this year. Everything's in millimeters. Uh, you can name it, you can save it wherever, and you can create it. You're kicked into an environment that looks like this. So you can notice that plus sign in the middle is the origin. That's your zero, zero, zero point. Everything is based off of that, and it gives you your coordinates at the bottom over here. As far as navigating goes, you can click this guy. So where it highlights red, if I click this box, it's going to snap. If I click this edge, which looks like it's highlighted in red when I go over it, It'll rotate. If I don't want to look at it on a view like this, so it's perfectly flat on, I can actually rotate the area by holding down the middle mouse button and dragging it around. If I want to pan, I can middle mouse button and right click and drag it around. And it'll maintain the same view but move around. Anyhow, we're here and you want to make something. Let's make this cube, but we'll take a bite out of it, like that, like that. We'll take a cube out of it, and we'll put a hole through the top, and the hole will go down to the bottom. Really simple. There's a couple of ways you can do this. First off, we need to make a sketch. So sketching, same in SolidWorks as it is in an X, is you draw the outline or the wireframe version of the part and then afterwards you can kind of make it be, I guess. So we can go to sketch. You click sketch. Gives us a dialog box. We don't have to worry about it. But it references you to the origin. You can see the orthographic views. You have top, front, and right. Front when we actually make the assembly, will be in relation to the front of the car, looking head on, right being the right side, and top being top down. But right now, if I want to make this, I'll start in the top plane, how about, and I'll make the outline of this shape. So I'll go over here, and when you highlight things, it turns red. I'll highlight the top plane, and I'll click it. It'll show me which direction the sketch is going to be. When I hit OK, it's going to orient it to the sketch, and now I'm in a 2D sketch plane. There's a few things I can do. I can either draw a line to make my box. I know I'm going to have to go like this, that, over here, and then back down again. And it's kind of messy, and there's probably a better way to do this. What we can do instead is use Profile, and when you click Profile, and you click around, instead of re-clicking, for every single line that you make, or like this one, I click, 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 click. Instead, with the profile, oh no, go back. With the profile, every single click will continue a line, no matter where I bring it. 
If you make a bunch of crap like this and you want to delete it, click, left mouse button, drag, delete. It's as simple as that. You can drag it any which way, and it makes the bounding box, which you can delete with. On some software, I think it's, maybe it's SolidWorks. If you drag down, it's a delete, but if you drag up, it's a copy or something. It changes like the meaning depending on which way you drag. On an X, it's all the same. You can just go over it and then delete it all. You will have to use your delete key. Using backspace doesn't work, but just you'll figure that out. You'll start spamming one of them, you'll figure it out. If I want to make a box or a simple shape, I can also just choose to make one out of, like, from up here. So I have a bunch of options. The rectangle is probably the one I'm going to want to go with. Clicking the rectangle, there's a few ways I can make a rectangle. This one is the one you're going to want most often by two points. If I select, and you can see the little red guy kind of highlights where it's going to click, and then it'll give me information about where it's going to go. So this sign right here where it says sketch vertical axis means that that point is going to be constrained, it's going to be a driven dimension to the vertical axis. axis. If I move it up, it snaps to the middle and it says sketch origin. That's where we want to start. That means that point is going to be fully defined at the origin. Anything that's at the origin is driving. I can click there and wherever I drag will make my rectangular square. It goes in all directions. And the next click I make will define it. There's some other ones. Uh, three points is kind of weird. So if you make one point, two points. The next one builds it. Uh, if you, an example of using this, if you clicked in the origin, you clicked along a dimension and you wanted to make it some height, I'd say it's much more time effective to just click the origin and just yeet it this way. The other one, which is really weird, if you click, it defines the center point. And then on the next click, it defines an edge. And on the third click, it defines how wide it is. I don't know why you'd ever use this, um, but it's an option. So just stick to this one. It's the easiest. This guy right here, the two points. So you've made your square shape. Perfect. If you want to dimension it, you can click it or highlight it so that it's red. Click it. This guy will come up, and it's as easy as just putting in whatever value you want. So if this is 300 millimeters, 30 centimeters. Uh, actually, I'm going to go back. That dialog box that shows up just means that when I hit, if I hit yes, the whole shape will shrink accordingly. If I hit no, then just that one thing uh, changes dimension. This gets a little bit interesting when you have something like uh, more complicated. You haven't put any dimensions on it in the first dimension you put. Let's say you have it all looking like how you want it, but nothing's dimensioned. And you hit yes, and the whole thing will shrink accordingly, and you get the right size that you want. If you hit no, and you have this big thing, and you change the height of it, then it would compress itself, and you could break your perfect like little picture that you made out of whatever shape you're doing. So. An example, I guess, if you had uh, like a line, like an L shape, <coughs> like that. If I actually did it properly, there we go. Doo -doo -doo. And the first dimension I said, all right, I want to make it so that this guy is 300. Do I want to? size it accordingly and say yes, it shrinks everything down a little bit. If I said no, it could break it because it just changed that one, everything else stays the same. So just hit yes after you make your design, it makes things easier. As we did already, once you fully define it, come on, there you go. It'll be black, and it'll be good to go. Once you're done your sketch, 
you can go up to finish. And finish exits you out of, ex, ex, exits you out of the sketch plane and brings you back up to the isometric view. And there's no longer any dimensions. It's all there still, but it's just the outline. So now you have the bottom half of the wireframe. You want to make it into a cube. So in order to drag it up, it's called extrude. So this is the options we have. How many of you are familiar with like Boolean operations? Boolean, Boolean yeah. It's like some coding experience, I'm guessing. Yeah, so you have like add, subtract, right, intersect, stuff like that. That's where all those symbols like this and this for, yeah, that's what that, those are. So it's the same thing with your parts. Once you have some kind of volume and you want to make it a cube, you can extrude or add stuff to it. If we want to put a hole in it, we'd say well, we can subtract material through. And then there's other ones like intercept and all kinds of stuff, but those are the main ones. So I'll hit extrude because I want to make this shape bigger. When I click it, it'll ask me to select a curve. I'll choose this one. Sketches are referred to as curves. I can click it and it'll give me some option for how much I want to extend it. I can also grab the arrow and just start playing with it. I can send it downward, I can send it upward. I'll choose, that looks like about a cube, sure. There's some other options here, which I'll get to in a second, but generally, if you want to just go off of something, there you go. You can also make it go both ways. You can play around with it. Once you're done, you can hit either apply and you'll stay in the dialog box. And you can select another curve to extrude, or you can hit OK, and it'll just exit it. If you've hit Apply, and there's nothing else you need to do still, you can just hit Cancel, and it'll go away. And you'll have your part still. So we have that. OK, I want to take this cube out. So really quick, what I can do is I can go Sketch, and I can define my planes off of the origin or, because this cube is fully defined, I can use one of the planes on the actual cube. So I'll take this guy, how about, and it gives me an option for like where the sketch is going to be. So in this case, if I have my axis like, or axes like this, it means that it's going to look like this, and the main cube is going to be down here. It's going to fill this area. If I clicked uh, over here, that moves to the bottom corner, and then my cube is going to be up here. And you can kind of see, like, if I move around, it can kind of snap to different areas. This one would be this bottom quadrant. So to make it super simple, I'll go over here, hit OK. And I can still see it in the background. I can't select it at all, but it's there. And I'll just draw another rectangle like that. And I'll finish it. I don't define it or anything at the moment. And there's a few ways I can do this. I can either hit subtract, and I can select my curve. Or no, sorry. I can select the body that I want to subtract from, and I can select, oh, OK, never mind. You can't use subtract, because you need two bodies to use it. My bad. What you should do instead is you should extrude, and you should select the curve. So immediately it wants to add a section. If I go this way, it recognizes that I'm going through a part and it switches which Boolean operation it uses. So it has inferred, so it's just kind of guessing what you want. If you say you want to add something, um, like don't infer anything, it will add a body inside of your extruded sketch which is weird. You just have two things that are inside the same space. What's better for us is we can choose subtract, and then it'll actually take that space away. So that's an example of the Boolean operation. And we can adjust it. If we go past it, it breaks because there's nothing up here to subtract, which is why leaving it at inferred is good for what we want to do up until the point where it gets complicated you have some kind of weird part, and you need to specify, I want to subtract going through these parts. I don't want to add things. 
it helps if you have a sketch that's not fully on whatever you're making. So let's say if I had a sketch like this and I started dragging it down, part of it is in here. Part of it's in here and it wants to subtract. The other part is wanting to add and it freaks out. It's like, what do you want me to do? Saying, I want you to add means that you'll add a chunk on the outside. Saying, I want to subtract, will subtract whatever's there no matter what. In this case, it's okay to use inferred because you just have it fully inside of the thing. And we could do the same thing with the hole because it looks like the same direction that I went down. I can take a chunk off here, I can take a, a hole there. But if I chose the same sketch and I said, I'll draw a circle this time, if I click the circle button, hit the center, drag it out, click the outside. If I finish this, it makes a hole, but it only makes the hole as deep as this guy. I want it to go all the way through, so it can't be on the same sketch. So I'll have to make another sketch. I'll do it from this guy. I'll redraw the circle. I'll finish it. Now it's just a sketch on that plane. I'll go to extrude. I'll start dragging it down. Now there's a few things I can do. I can either just drag it all the way through and it will just make the hole that I want. That's good. Is there a cleaner way to do this? If I had some other part later on that I'm adding and I'm starting to use this part for something else and it says I just drug it like way past the material, if I add anything to the bottom of it, it's going to make a hole going through that as well. A much better thing to use instead is changing how far the end goes to be either until next or until selected. So until next just means it'll keep subtracting until it hits some other feature. In this case, the feature would be this bottom plane. It kind of highlights in a pinkish color. It's kind of hard to see. What I could do if I wanted to find it, let's say if I had not that feature, but the next one that I wanted to subtract to, I could open it up and say until selected. So don't subtract, like don't stop subtracting until I tell you to. It gives you examples of what all, the, all of them do. It gives you different versions. But if I say until selected and I click this face, it knows that that's how far I'll go and then I'll stop. If there's something else, I can go to that face and I'll stop. I can apply it, can exit out of this, and then I have the shape that I was going for. So over here, there's a few different dialog boxes like along the side, which are really helpful. Uh, don't worry about these three. This one is just like the last one you did. This guy just tells you what parts are in the model. So in this case, it's just a single model. So it's just the one at the top there. The next one is the part navigator. And it tells you what you've done to this part. So it knows that it defined a coordinate system. It made a sketch on the bottom, this guy in orange. It extruded it into a block. It made another sketch. It subtracted, made another sketch, subtracted. So there's a quite a few things here. What we could do instead to kind of cut things down, if I got rid of those sketches and I went back into this plane, what if I just drew it right here? I know that when I extrude this part, it's going to have this feature consistent all the way up. It's not going to change. If I said, I want it to be there, and I finish that instead, what happens, and I can get rid of these guys to kind of show it, is as it extrudes, it extrudes this area that's inside. If I go back into it, you can see there's different colors. It knows that, OK, there's nothing out here for me to extrude. This is a bounding box where I'm going to extrude. And this is another area. It won't extrude that area. So you can have a lot of things if you want to put holes all over it. I'll just click like that, make a little cheese block. Oop, not that one. And I finish that, and I go to extrude it. That whole 
thing, it's extruded as well, and it comes up. And then anything I do after the fact, if I make a sketch in that face and extrude it down, that's how it'll subtract. So that's the basics of that. There's a few other ones that are really nice to use. Um, so this block, like I said earlier, has a lot of sharp edges. I don't want sharp edges, I want it to be rounded. So what I can use is called an edge blend, also called a fillet, I think, on SolidWorks. I would call it a fillet usually, but it's called edge blend on an X. And you can select your edge. If I zoom into it, you can see that it rounds it off. I can choose how round I want it. If I make it bigger, obviously it's going to be a bigger one. Get quite large with it. If I hit OK, it'll finish it off. I could go back into it and say I want to do more than one curve. I want to do a bunch of them. In fact, I want to go all the way around. It'll make those and make those meshes where it kind of subtracts like that. And I'll have rounded edges. Same thing with the chamfer, where it's just a, a straight edge. If I come over here and I say I want this edge to be straight, it's going to auto-click all the way down because I already made this one. But this edge is a perfect angle. And you can adjust the angle of it in that dialog box when you click it. Another good one is the mirror feature. So instead of defining this whole block the first time around, and there's a lot of stuff going on, if it's symmetrical at any one point, um, an example, a table, a table, that's a good example for this. If I had a table, I could draw from the origin being here, and I could make this whole thing, put legs on it. But I know that it's going to be symmetric down the middle. This side is the same as this side. It's also the same this way. This side is the same as this side. And so what I can do instead is I can draw half of it, and then I can mirror the rest. Let's do it in a sketch instead. The sketch one's very similar. You can mirror it from here. If I say I want to mirror this guy, and I want to mirror it around some plane or some axes, I would click somewhere. It would copy it over. And when I'm finished with it, it would extrude that whole shape upward. I actually got an error out of this. <laughs> because when I extrude it, which bounding box does it, does it want now? I have a line in between. Does it want this one or does it want this one? It's not sure. I have two enclosed areas with a bunch of holes in it. In order to make it recognize it, I need to delete these lines that are in between. So I get one bounding box. When I'm finished with it, yes, rebuild it. OK. Leave me alone. Then it will do its thing. So you have a part, or someone gives you a part, and you're like, hey, that's great and all. Um, I don't care about the work you did. I only care about a certain measurement that involves my work, and so I need to look at your piece, I need to take a measurement, I need to piss off. So here's your part, EPA. That's amazing. Um, I want to know how long it is from this face to the other face over here. The easiest way to do it, hover over the white space on the screen. You can click. And it'll pull up a little box. The first one, or second one, I guess, this one doesn't really work, is the measure tool. If I click it, it brings up a little dialog box where I can measure an object. So measure object just measures whatever I click the first time. It gives me a bunch of information about it, the area perimeter, all different kinds of stuff. There's no volume to it because it's just a plane. If I make a second click, it'll reference the two parts, and it'll give me just the distance and the angle between them. If I click three of them, it doesn't know what to do, because what object is this? There's nothing here. OK, if I want to reference a bunch of stuff, I can do object set. So object set means that if I click a bunch of things, it'll put them all together, it says, the total area, total perimeter, and the centroid of these three faces 
is that. It's a set of objects, it's a bunch of them, it's all lumped together, this is what I get. And then you restart it. You can do point. Measuring from a point is a little weird. If I click a point over here, it just gives me the coordinates. It's not necessarily really helpful. If you do point set, I can click a bunch of them and it just gives me information about it. Not really good information. I don't ever use those. There's a few other ones in here which I'd encourage you to explore on your own. You can also click uh, like more, basically. This one gives you other options. So if I selected um, this guy and this one, maybe not, maybe this guy, oh, right. object set, that's what I needed. Object set. It's like a bunch of things. So it gives me more information than just the area perimeter and centroid. It also gives me a bunch of stuff in between. It's helpful if you have something you want to try to make um, like a mass calculation out of. You can uh, define what material it's made out of in the CAD. And you can say, hey, here's a thing. Measure from here to here how much mass is in that area. Um, that's what these guys are for. You don't always need them selected. You can see that it gets rid of it. But measuring is really helpful. Another one, again, if you just click in the white space, it gives you your last used command. And if you hit this little box, like, or the drop down arrow, it gives you all the ones that I've used up until like, the last nine of them. You can see that I used like an edit sketch, I mirrored some stuff, I made a chamfer, an edge blend, it goes down and down. This is probably where I subtracted those circles earlier. So if you're doing a lot of stuff and you don't want to keep having to like click up here, click up here, click up here, you can just click this way and just kind of drop it down and click them from here. And that way you're just always on your mouse. There's something really nice about NX. It's almost entirely mouse based. Super recommended you all get a mouse of some kind. Gaming mice have the most buttons which is really helpful if you're trying to map things to it. I suggest at least two extra buttons on the side for forward and back. Really helps with navigating sometimes. And if you have that, and a scroll wheel, you need a scroll wheel with a button in the middle. Um, you can do almost everything with just the mouse. I haven't had to touch my keyboard very much at all, apart from putting in dimensions. Even then, if I go into like one of the extrude options, I don't really need to if it's a if it's a integer amount, I can drag it to what I want. So if I want to drag it to 500, I can get pretty close right there. All of my mouse, just the mouse. Is instead of hitting sketch, you can hit the datum plane. Selecting a plane, it'll give you some kind of reference. So let's say I want a reference to this guy, the origin down here. It'll make a plane. I can say, I want this plane to actually be out here. I want it to be like yay big. Notice how the camera cuts out here, actually. If I make it bigger, it looks like the camera has some kind of region where it will actually let me see it. It's cutting off if I go too far away. Strange. I can hit OK. And I now have another plane to work off of. So this is really weird. It's cutting off my plane. And if I zoom farther out, I pan around, it's not going to change at all. It looks like there's some kind of area where it's going to let me actually render stuff. And the same thing, if you have an issue like this where you notice your uh, objects are getting cut off, or if you accidentally push it away and you're in the void of your CAD, you're like, I don't know where I am. You can center yourself back to your model by hitting Control F. If you hit Control F, it'll clip it back and reset the camera so that everything in your uh, model is in view. And now there's no camera issues until I make something else that's really massive. And so what this plane does, instead of having to rely on the coordinate system or the planes of this guy, I can use this plane, which is offset from everything else I've done in order to draw something. So I'm not restricted to just having to continually kind of make stuff off of the origin. I can make a plane and then make it elsewhere, which is handy sometimes. 
something more complex, you can also make another uh, datum, like all three planes. It's a bit more difficult, but if I need to go over here, I need to go over here, and I needed my plane to be on some kind of weird angle, I can drag it, put it down. And what it gives me is like a fake origin. So this origin, or this uh, coordinate system, is still related to the origin at 0, 0, 0, but it's much further away. I can manipulate it to be what I want it to be. And after I make it, I get a second origin that I can also sketch off of. So if you have some really weird angles that you need to make, if, you make, if you're subtracting stuff strangely, you can use this method to just kind of plop another coordinate system that you can base your stuff off of. Everything off of it is defined, I'm pretty sure. I don't think it's uh, not constrained because the actual coordinate system itself uh, constrains its location. So like the zero, zero, zero of this coordinate system, which is away from the actual origin, once you place it and define it and set it, it constrains itself to be stuck there and won't ever change. And so anything you draw off of it will be, uh, will have driving dimensions still. Say I want to do something really weird. If I want to make a regular shape, um, like a stop sign, and I know that you know it has angles up and down. They're all the same size. I could draw it. I could do all the lines. I could say, hey, give me a stop sign like this. It's going to look kind of rough. There's no dimensions on it. I'll define this length. I'll say that they're all equal to each other. They're all at this angle. Yada, yada, yada. It takes some time to make it. There's an easier way. Instead of defining all those lines independently, once you're in the sketch, you can go to Menu over here. And you can say, I want to insert a curve. And it gives me a bunch of options. All the options that are up above, like the rectangle, circle, line, arc, and spline, which we'll get into eventually. Um, but one of the more handy ones is some polygon. So when I put polygon, it gives me the option for how many sides I want. That has eight, does it not? Yes, it does. It has eight sides. Not 87, it has 8. There we go. And if I select the point and drag it out, it'll make a perfect 8-sided polygon where everything's equal. I can select the position that I want it. It's good if you're modeling bolts, although instead of modeling bolts, you can just go to some other website that has like a, a catalog of them. And you can just download the CAD from there. But if you have to model something that is a regular shape, you can just click it from here. It gives you a bunch of options that I need to make like a 12-sided shape, I could click somewhere. And it gives me a perfectly 12-sided shape. I can go down to three is the minimum. It gives me a perfect triangle somewhere, equal L triangle. If you have a bunch of sketches like this, and you say, hey, I want to have a rectangle with this weird lumpy thing on the side, but my sketches don't line up. And if I delete this guy, this line, now the sketch is open, and it gives me errors, because it's like, what on earth are you doing? Instead, you can use trim. Trim is super helpful. You can make your basic shapes, and then you just click and drag, and this guy will cut whatever you go through. So if I click and drag here, it will delete those lines until it meets something. So if I go here, it deletes that guy. I can kind of just keep going around until it's all done. Uh, there's still a bounding area in here, not quite here yet, so I need to get rid of these two lines. Instead of deleting this whole line, I can use the trim function, just go like that, get rid of it. And now it's one area. So if I extrude this, it's going to be one shape instead of having to draw like a weird rectangle on this. I can just draw the rectangle, draw this 13-sided shape, and then just cut it apart afterwards. Really helpful. Uh, I think that's all I have for basic stuff if you guys want to go. I don't think there's anything I'm missing. If I am, then I'll just mention it at uh, another thing like this. But yeah, that's kind of the basics of it. Have fun.